I'm going to show you how to fully automate your onboarding process in a way that ensures your client satisfaction remains high. So the onboarding process is a critical phase in your customer's journey, but it can also be a significant drain on your time as a business owner. So instead of dedicating hours to setting up Slack channels, coordinating onboarding forms and procedures, and handling communications, you could be focusing on prospecting, closing deals, adding value, and growing your business. Most importantly, automating your onboarding can increase your profitability through many different ways, one being that it allows you to take on more clients. So if you're a business owner ready to streamline operations, boost efficiency, and leverage AI automation, book a call with me today. I'll show you how to seamlessly integrate systems into your business so you can save time, cut costs, and focus on what truly matters, growing your business. Also, join my school community for exclusive resources and insights that go beyond what I share on YouTube, giving you the competitive edge in this ever-evolving world of business. Both of those links are in the description. So I'm going to show you this super simple process that you need to be following that we use for our company when it comes to onboarding new clients. So whether you onboard one person a month or 10 different clients a month, it doesn't matter. This will save you time, especially if you're onboarding more clients, of course, but this will save you time and just allow you to focus on higher value things and, you know, just increase your profitability, as I mentioned earlier. So as you can see, we're starting off when we submit an Airtable form of a client. So let's say we just closed the client. We're then going to come into Airtable where we're using the CRM and you could use different CRMs like ClickUp or HubSpot. It doesn't matter, but we used specifically just Airtable for this. And this is just an example table for reference of this video. And essentially whenever we want to submit a new form of a client, so we just close somebody. Then we fill out this little form right here. So it has the name, email, stage of where they're at, project price, project description, and date created. So this is all just super simple um, information and credentials that you need to be filling in. So this might look a lot more expansive for your company. So maybe you have a a letter that you're a video, I should say, that you send to your clients whenever you close them, which is super effective and allows you to prime them, of course. But we'll get into that a little bit later. But you should be having a form that's at least something like this. So I'll go ahead and fill this out and I'll show you what happens next. So Nick and I'll do I'll do a reference email. And for the stage, we're just going to say to do. Project price, we'll do $2. Project description, we'll say AI automation. And the date created, um, we'll do today. Then we'll submit. And as you can see, if we come back into our data, this is then going to be inputted into our Airtable. So now I built out two different automations. So if we go back to our flywheel before I actually submit this automation to start running, so as you can see, we just did step one, which was submit our Airtable form of the client. Next up, it's then going to auto send Stripe invoices. So once it does that, we're waiting for that invoice to be paid. So we have to create events in make.com to watch when this invoice is paid. Then once it is successfully paid and um, there's no remaining balance, we're going to prime the customer or the client, and we're just going to reinforce their decision, reduce buyer's remorse, and from there, we're going to create a Slack channel with them in it and remind to fill out onboarding and anything else. So when it comes to priming them and sending these welcome emails and everything, so we're essentially just re reinforcing the decision and reducing buyer's remorse. And why this is so important that I said it two or three times already now is because if you successfully onboard your clients on a emotional and technical level, so you're sending them um, all this information right away. So you're sending them a video, you're sending them thank you for um, joining us or just welcome them aboard for um, signing up for your subscription, retainer, whatever. They stay 256% longer than those who aren't successfully onboarded. So they're not being sent these emails or anything like that, these thank yous right away. That's why it's so important. They'll stay 256% longer. So if you're trying to reduce churn, refer to this. So now that we've filled out our submission of the client onboarding, we have this automation where it's going to automatically generate an invoice. So I'm not exactly sure what invoices, um, what platform you might be using specifically, but Stripe is a very common one amongst agencies and different businesses. So that's what we um, use for this, especially because we use it for our company. So essentially we're watching a records. So in Airtable, all you do is 
basically you want to connect in your Airtable or whatever CRM you're using. And once you connect it, so you connected your API and everything. So to actually connect it, what you do here is you can go to OAuth, click save, and then it'll allow you to log into your account and connect the Airtable or whatever CRM. Then you're finding your base. So mine is called Reply CRM. The table is onboarding. And the trigger field, this isn't hugely important. Um, you could just do created. So as you can see, I'll come into Airtable. We have a created section right here. So we'll go back to our automation and the limit, we'll just do 10, or we could actually even do one or two, because I mean, we're not going to be onboarding more than one person at a time, more than likely, depending what type of business you have. Then what we're doing next is in Stripe, we're creating a customer. So essentially we have to create an icon in Stripe. So if we want to charge someone, we have to create that customer. So to do that, we connect our Stripe account and we're just doing the same thing that I just showed you with Airtable. Clicking add, then clicking save after you click on OAuth in the description. So as you can see in our Airtable, we have all these different um, little categorizations. So we have the client ID, project description. I highly recommend you click create a client ID in your CRM. So you could do that by going specifically to formula. And if you scroll down, since it's not loading, if you type formula and you just type record ID, or if you do client ID, then it'll create that ID for you, that identification number. So that just helps organize different clients, um, giving them a long string of numbers. So let's go back to the mapping. So we mapped the project description. So you don't even have to include this stuff. The only thing that you do need is email and name. Even name can go without, but I highly recommend you put that on there. But so here, we're just putting the email in and we're just mapping this from our air table. Super simple stuff right now. Next, we're setting up a create an invoice item. So what we're doing once we connect this is we select a customer ID. So we're going to come up customer ID from this previous module. So as you can see, this is eight right here. That's the module. And it's um, corresponding to this right here. So you're copying this little mapping uh, CUS QD long string of text. Then what we want to do is actually charge them for a specific amount. So let's say I close them for close a client for a $2,500 retainer and we want to input that in. So the tricky thing about Stripe is they take things or they read things in integers, integer amounts and cents. So if I were to take the pricing from the project price as I entered right here, $2, then it would read as two cents in Stripe, which obviously we don't want. So what we had to do here is create a formula. And with that formula, all we did is multiply this record by 100. And then that just converts it to a regular dollar amount that we would want. So $2, um, it's just going to equate to 200 right here. But don't worry about that. So essentially, to map that properly, I found down here is the, where is it exactly? Make.com price that I charged it as. So just 200 which is just later going to be represented as $2. But you could also, you know, if you, as I was mentioning, if we hypothetically close a client for $2,500, and we would just put that here, 2,500 times that by 100, and then you would get your proper number. And the currency, you're just doing your country code. So you could also search it if you don't know, put in your country code. Mine is US dollars. And the description, also not hugely important. You're just mapping the description, again, from your air table. Now, we're not going to worry about a start or end. We're just going to move on to the next part, which is creating an invoice. So here, you're just putting your customer ID again. So you're getting this from this uh, create a customer module. So as I showed you earlier, you'll find that right there. And the collection method, send invoice. This is very important. So unless you have a card on file for your customer, then you have to send this invoice. Um, otherwise, you can just charge automatically if you do have a card on file. And for the due date, we want to add a little bit of urgency to our clients payments and everything. So how we do this is, well, I started off with a date and this date, it's just the day that I entered the Airtable um, data. So as you can see, it's right there, but we want them to pay in two days or even one day would be better. So what we do here is add a date. So how you find this is if you go into the routing section and if you just search items, and you just search add days, then you'll find that right here. 
and um, you just input the date and the number that you would want after uh, the date or after the semicolon. You just put that after after that. And let's say you want to do it. You want it to be due in ten days. Just type in ten. But we're gonna leave it as two. And the project description. I already mentioned that before. Now, don't forget. This is a super important part to include pending invoice items behavior because if you leave empty or if you do exclude, then it's not going to include a price on your invoice. So make sure you keep that on there. And next, we're going to finalize a draft invoice. So simplest things right here. We're just going to get the invoice ID from the previous module that we just made, which was create an invoice, map that in there. Then we're going to make an API call. So this is what's actually going to send the email off to the client. So as I input it in here, uh, I should find the email right here. So unperuskiai at gmail.com. That is going to send an email to that client or that customer, I should say, of the invoice. And how you do that, put in this exact string of text right here. So please copy this. It'll be forward slash V1 forward slash invoices forward slash invoice ID. Where you get the mapping from is the prior module, which is finalize a draft invoice forward slash send. Then you can just leave everything else alone. Actually, you will have to change the method from whatever it was probably get to post. And that's all you have to do. Don't do anything else. Now, this will completely create a customer and um, send that invoice for you automatically. So now that we have um, all that ran through, I want to show you what this is going to do specifically. So now we're running it, waiting for all this to go through. And as you can see, successfully did all that for me. So now I want to show you this invoice and I'll show you it in the email and on Stripe. So as you can see, I created a customer and here's everything. So I have the name, I have the email. There's no subscriptions in there, but there is a payment. And as you can see, it's incomplete. So August 10th, for some reason, the time is off because it's about 4 p.m. right now. But anyways, here's the invoice. We'll pull it up real quick. And then after this, we'll check our email. So invoice was sent to nperiski at gmail.com. And here's all the information. So now it's ready to be paid and I'll show you the email. So just as I mentioned, here's the email. So from one minute ago, it sent the $2 invoice from um, Nicholas Peruski, which is me, obviously. And the description is just saying AI automation. You could change it to whatever you want. You could change the price. Um, but yeah, super powerful tool. And we're just getting started. So next I'm going to show you what happens when you actually submit the payment, or I'm sorry, when it's successfully made. So basically what we're doing here is we're doing a Stripe Watch events. And before I actually get into that, I want to show you what's going to happen. So we're watching when this invoice is getting paid and we're just going to, once they do pay, we're going to prime our client. So as I mentioned before, why this is so important. So we're just going to reinforce the decision, send them an email and all that other stuff. So this is also going to create a Slack channel with a minute and remind them to fill out onboarding or whatever types of forms you may have them uh, fill out. So as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm just sending them an email of basically saying we're pumped to start working with you. So we're priming them. So we're just saying we're pumped to start working with you and to schedule your kickoff call here. And then this is where you'll insert the URL and also insert a video of, you know, a welcome video. If you guys have that, if you have a video of your CEO, you know, just welcoming the client on board. So I'll get into all this in a second and how to actually do it. But here we're just creating a channel in Slack with the new client. And this is going to be the onboarding channel. So it's just going to, you know, do send them new messages about onboarding forms and send them different reminders. So it's going to be another communication channel to send them all of this information. So how to do this? We're doing a Stripe watch events. So to do this, I'll back out. I'll go to Stripe watch events. And we're just going to choose a hook. So I already have a web hook connected, but all you do is just click add. You click the group that you want this to be in. So um, let's find setup intent. I think it's setup payment intent. Payment intent right here. And then you'll just select payment intent succeeded. So that's how you get that right there. I'm going to click save. I'm actually going to go back to my other web hook. I don't want to create a bunch of new ones. Then we're going to have to retrieve a customer because we don't have any of the information in this workflow right here. So customer ID, we're going to have to find that. Let me make sure this is properly connected. Click OK. 
Now let's try getting that again. I might have to run this module to make sure that it's working properly. Okay, so we just ran that module to make sure everything was synced up. So once you're coming into the Retrieve a Customer in Stripe for the second module that you're going to be importing, you're going to insert a customer ID. So where do you get this? So you'll find customer from one object. So we'll just scroll down and here's customer right here. So you just put that right there and I'm just going to select all, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm, I'm just saying, giving me all the output. Next, what we're going to do is we have to find our record in Airtable, you know, because we're gonna have to send um, the person emails and everything like that. So we have to find all their information and make sure we're sending this to the right person. So we're going to search records and this might look a little bit differently if you're using a different CRM. So you might have to do like list out tasks or search tasks or just, you know, you're trying to search your CRM. So what you're doing here, finding your base as somewhere before, and we're just selecting all output fields. So I just want all of it, super simple stuff. Then we're going to update a record. So once we find that person and that they did pay successfully, we want to update that record to say that they did pay because if you come into my CRM, we have different stages and one of them is payment received. And um, that's what we would want. So stage set that's a payment received out of all of them. And make sure you're inputting the record ID. Where you get that is, so here's my CRM. And you should find in your CRM, this is hypothetically if you're not using Airtable, you should find some sort of ID in here. So we're just going to click this ID right here. And then we're going to send an email with Gmail. So we're going to get the email from our updated record or the search records, doesn't matter. It's going to be the same email. And then we're just going to customize this email template. So I want to say welcome aboard. So I want it to be a welcoming subject line. And then as I showed you before, here's email content. So basically this will say, um, actually we want to change it from email to name. So we'll do something like if it's Nick, it will just be Nick. We are pumped to start working with you. So it'll just insert that name. Then it's saying all this different stuff that I showed off earlier. So we'll back out of that. And let's show you the created channel. So we're basically just connecting this to our company channel. So I have reprised my company and you'll just connect that and you'll find the name or you'll create the name of the channel that you want to create. And I just named this onboarding and you can make it private or not. I chose that for it to be private because it's only going to be the bot, the CEO and um, the client. Then we're going to invite users. For some reason, this isn't connected. Okay, so now we're going to invite users. So we'll just do a public channel or we'll do a private channel since that's what this created channel was. Then you'll insert the channel ID and you'll find that from this prior module. Number 11 is the prior right there. And you can see it popped up right there. So you get the channel ID at the very top. And then you'll just invite the user of um, who you want to invite or who your client is, I should say. So the user, you can just put the email right there Click OK, and then just create a message. So this message is going to be the same thing as the email. So we just want to send reminders and everything. So even after all this is ended, we could be sending more reminders saying, hey, we just want to make sure you submit your onboarding form. So you can include stages, like if they um, if the payment's received and they still haven't done their onboarding. So you can include different stages on here. You would just write whatever that is. And you could add different triggers. So if seven days pass and they still haven't figured or finished their onboarding, you don't want to send a reminder, maybe even give them a call, but let's finish this out. So basically we're just saying name and um, exactly what we said in the email, pump to start working with you and we'll click okay. And essentially this will automate the entire process of all the messaging. So when it comes to sending them emails, sending them into a Slack channel with all that information, making sure they filled out their onboarding, automatically sending them invoices and um, priming them as well. So if you're a business owner and you're not following a similar process to this, I highly recommend you consider implementing this exact process we employ for our clients as I guarantee this will save you time every single week. Also, if you're looking for personalized help to identify what systems and bottlenecks are holding your business back from growing, then book a free one-on-one -on -one call with me. We'll not only identify your growth constraints, but we'll implement a systemized plan to solve them and handle 100% of the process. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.